Iron Supporting Food Banks collects food and cash donations for needy families in Newham Borough and beyond. Please consider making a donation via their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of this stream. Come on you Irons! Hello, welcome back to the West Ham Massive. Thanks for joining us. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe. Drop a like on the stream if you like it and get involved in the comments section. That's really important. I'm, I really want to know what you guys think about this. Now, we're just over, by my rough calculation, six weeks away from the January transfer window opening, being flung open. And then at the end of the transfer window, it'll be slammed shut. That's always the, the tabloid terminology that's used. There's a couple of stories that are out there at the minute. I'm just going to uh, share them with you guys so that you can sort of have a little bit of a look if you want to check it out for yourself afterwards. But I'd like your thoughts, as I say. So this is the first one. So this is from the One Football website, and they've got it from Football Today. The headline reads, as you can see there, that West Ham decide on a £20 million Man City ace as Pakatar's replacement. That is the report. Now, if you don't know who that gentleman is, wearing the number 10 shirt for England under 21s. That is the Manchester City play, but player by the names of James McAtee. Now, James McAtee has played about four Premier League games for Manchester City thus far. However, he's played more Premier League games than that in the past for Sheffield United. He was on loan there last, uh, last season. And he was on loan near the season before, in actual fact, in the championship. Now, his his Premier League stats are, are you know, considering that he's been a bit of a bit part player, his his Premier League stats are, are not too shabby. He's played 34 matches in the Premier League, three goals, three assists. And a lot of that will be that he's been coming on as a substitute and, and all the rest of it. So they're not necessarily all starts as such. Now, he's 22 years of age. As I say, he's played... For Sheffield United in the Championship and in the Premier League, he's had a couple of fleeting appearances for Manchester City in the Premier League as well. Um, and and on the face of it, I'd probably say ordinarily, actually not a bad signing. You know, he's young, he's English, he's he's a forward-thinking player. He can play in a number of positions in, in advanced up the pitch. He's you know just looking here on transfer market. He's had sixty games as an attacking midfielder, forty-six games as a central midfielder. 10 matches as centre forward, if you please, eight as a right midfielder, five as a right winger, three as a second striker and three matches as a left midfielder. So he's quite versatile. He's quite adept at sort of moving around the pitch and filling in different roles if he needs to. As I say, he's 22 years of age. He's got 14 caps for the under 21s, England and six goals. Where I probably have a little bit of a problem with this signing, though, is that I look at it and I, I say, despite the good things, you know, he's got Premier League experience, he's young, he's got a lot of development, he's had a good, he would have had a good grounding, a good coaching development stage under the likes of Pep Guardiola and, and his coaching staff at, at the Etihad. No problem at all. My issue is that I think that by signing this guy, and I I, I get that it's looking at him as a, as a the headline suggests, as a replacement for Paqueta. I did wonder about whether Carlos Soler was going to be his, his heir apparent, but it looks like that he's not cut the mustard. So now we're looking elsewhere. But the thing is, is that it then puts a little bit of a roadblock on the career development, does it not, of perhaps one George Earthy, who's currently on loan himself in the championship, as James McAtee was at Sheffield United a couple of seasons ago. Um, does it also maybe put a little bit of a block on the, on the career pro progression of Lewis Orford as well? So two young players that are sort of like moving forwards. I don't think that probably it would put much of a, a block on Freddie Potts. I think he plays a little bit further back in, in sort of like more defensive midfield type role. So it probably doesn't put a block on him. But even, you know, th like I say, those two players, Lewis Orford and George Earthy, does it put a little bit of a block on them? You know, we've got the the fabled academy of football 
emblazoned on the side of the carpet. It's something that if you've followed this channel for a while, you'll know that I'm quite passionate about the Academy of Football and trying to produce our own players. Does it put a block on on their progression? Uh, out there, out there on loan, obviously, um, in the case of George Earthy, he's out there on loan at Bristol City. Um, Lewis Alford's still in in and around the first team squad. Whether he'll go out on loan in January remains to be seen. But does this, if we go for James McAtee, for all the the good things that he would bring to the table, does it possibly put a block on some of our homegrown talent from actually making a play for the first team? Let me know what you think. You got the comment section below. I think he would potentially be a good signing, but I do wonder about. Uh, some of the collateral damage it might cause with the careers of other players that are looking to come through from the academy. Um, but let me know what you think, or whether you think that James McAtee would be a, a good signing or not, and the reasons behind it. Now, there's another story that I saw as well. And again, I will share this with you so that you guys know, and you can maybe have a little look yourself. And this was something I saw a couple of days ago, and I I haven't seen anyone mention it. I don't know. Um, but this is a story about Leandro Trossard, who's obviously the Belgian international who formerly of Brighton and Hove Albion, now at Arsenal. And the talk is that, that he's uh, there's talks going on for a new contract with him. But the situation, it appears, is being monitored by the hierarchy at our very own West Ham United and that possibly we might look to make a move for him in the not too distant future. Now, Leandro Trossard, is, as I say, he's a Belgian international, formerly of Brighton and Hove Albion, now at Arsenal Football Club. And he's, he's a full, again, an, a more offensive player. I think one of the things that we have struggled with, it's fair, fairly safe to say, is scoring goals. We, we've spent £27 million on the only German international who is unreliable as far as his fitness is concerned, it seems. And obviously, Leandro Trossard is a player that has obviously got Premier, a great deal of Premier League experience, it has to be said. Uh, as far as the Premier League is concerned, he has played 181 matches between his time at Brighton and Hove Albion and at Arsenal. He's got 40 goals and 25 assists. He's got experience playing in Europe, international level, all of these things. One of the things that I do look at, though, he's a little bit older than I thought he was. He's actually 29 years of age and he turns 30 next month actually in in a couple of weeks time on the 4th of December he turns 30 years of age so again one of the problems that we've had is that a lot of people say that our squad is quite old and I agree I it, it absolutely is that's a fact would it really be a progressive move to bring in a, a, a guy that has got Premier League experience fine no problem international experience great his his pedigree is is there for for you to see but He's going to be 30 years of age. If we go for him in the January transfer window or possibly in the summer, who knows, depending upon the situation, he's going to be 30 years of age. The other thing that kind of worries me is that there's obviously been a lot of talk that Arsenal are one of the clubs that are in the frame and hovering for Mohamed Kadus. And I sort of sit there and I think, you know, are they if, if we do make a play for Leandro Trossard, does that possibly give them a little bit of leverage that they're going to use against us to try and get Mohamed Kadus through the door. But then again, there's another train of thought that's like, look, he's probably going to leave anyway. So to be honest with you, does it really make much of a difference? I I'm not too sure. I mean, but as I say, the thing that concerns me is, yes, this is a guy that's got a Premier League pedigree. He's got experience. He Again, same as James McAtee. He's someone that can fill in in a number of different positions. Yes, he's predominantly a left winger. And again, that's something that would concern me because we've obviously got Crescencio Somerville, who has, seems to have really grabbed that position with both hands in recent matches. But is that going to put a bit of a block on his progression? But he's played as a left winger. He can also play as an attacking midfielder, a centre forward, a second striker, a left midfielder and a right winger as well. So again, he's quite versatile. He could move around the pitch to suit the situation at any given moment in time. Um, but as I say, there's a, there's a few things, like I say, you know, his age, for one thing, would be a concern to me because we're looking to try and get the average age of the squad down. I'm not quite sure that someone who turns 30 in a, in a couple of weeks' time would actually achieve that outcome. And also, I do wonder, is that is Arsenal possibly then going to turn around and say that actually... We'd like, you know, if you if we're going to sort of like talk to you about Leandro Trossard, then let's also have a conversation about Mohamed Kadus as well. 
Um, but as I say, there's a part of me that thinks he's probably going to go at the end of the season anyway. So it's probably just sort of, you know, staving off the inevitable. But what can you do? Um, but Leandro Trossard, you know, he's he's obviously someone that's also been linked in, in the transfer window that's upcoming or maybe the one in the summer. I don't know. Um, there's talks going on about a new contract to Arsenal, but West Ham are apparently monitoring the situation. But let me know what you think about both these players. James McAtee of Manchester City, Leandro Trossard at Arsenal. If you think they're a good signing, give us your reasons why they would potentially be a good signing in January transfer window. Or if you think, actually, no, they wouldn't be a good signing. Again, get your reasoning in below. Um, give us some detail. Give us some meat on the bones, guys. Um, thanks for joining us. If you've liked the video, please do drop a like on it. If you're new around here, please do subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit the bell icon for new notifications as and when we go live or add any content to the channel. Please also don't forget to give your support to the Iron Supporting Food Banks charity. We'll see you next time. Iron Supporting Food Banks collects food and cash donations for needy families in New and Borough and beyond. Please consider making a donation via their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of this stream. Come on you irons!